That's me back again, Dorota Pańska International, new artist and educator. And today I'm in with Fiona and we are going to do the sculpted set. So I have already um, done most of the needles and I have left two for you to watch me uh, doing it just to kind of save you uh, time. And then we will do some beautiful pink and gold design. So first of all, when the client comes into me, I will just start with the hand sanitizer. Obviously we've done it before. You can just wrap in. And you have seen me working on Fiona many times before. And then I will use the nail dehydrator just to clean the nails, like to don't wrap any oils which might be on the nail plate. My next step would be to push back the cuticles. I'm just pushing back the cuticles. And I would do it like one hand first and second hand. So all the steps I will do on um, every single nail. And then for a natural nails, I'm using 180 grit to give us scratches. So 180 grit to make the scratches, file the free edge. Okay, and once one hand is done, I'm going to do exactly the same on the other hand. So give it scratches. And the 180 grit is a perfect for a natural nails. Also, you guys give me so many fantastic questions. Like, um, so, like one of them was the filing direction. So, if the nails are really flat, oily, I would kind of work against the nail growth to create more scratches. If the nails are nice and strong, I will follow with the nail grow because it's grow kind of like a fish scale, and. Um, the tails grows kind of fish scale so if we file this way we lift them lifting them up uh, but this way the product will adhere better uh, but it is also damaging to the nail so you need to find a happy medium like which way you want to file now remove the dust and then dehydrate the nails and uh, apply the nail forms so i'm just dehydrating the nails And apply the new forms. Now another question you have asked me many many times is regarding the uh, cuticle work. So the nail anatomy says the cuticle, cuticle, it is on your nail plate. So this is all removed. Like I always remove it before I apply the forms. But then this part, which you can see it here, that's your um, aponicum and also nail fault and this part i remove after i have finished the filing and application of the product this way my clients never get allergic reactions because if we do too much excessive work on our nail faults okay this is this isn't a cuticle this is a nail fault like a, by the correct nail anatomy this is a nail fault if we do too much excessive work in there the product can easily enter uh, those areas and then your clients are more prone to the allergy so that's the reason why i'm only cleaning the nail plate so i'm making sure there is no cuticle on the nail plate the nail plate the hard stuff so no cuticle there because otherwise the nails wouldn't last it has to be completely removed nothing on the nail plate and then the nail fault i clean it after just before the gel polish application okay so that's my form ready i'm pre-pinching it in between my fingers so i'm rolling it and rolling rolling then close the form and that's the way like i have learned and that's the comfiest way for me to apply the forms and then i need to do couple cuts so i'm taking my scissors and I'm making one cut and the other cut. These two cuts allow me to pinch much more. And then when I'm applying the form, I'm going to hide the client view because usually they try to help us too much. So I'm hiding the client view so the client doesn't help me too much. And then place the form right in the middle. Like, and I want the form to go kind of straight to upwards. Like I don't like the nails which are going down the way. And then I'm start closing the form. Okay, so that's my first nail applied. I would use an extra nail dehydrator and universal air bond. 
another questions I get the universal air bond uh, it is working like a double uh, sided sticky tape so it's kind of gets the gel to adhere much better and this way this needle has to dry so I've got time to apply the form on the other other needle so just exactly the same I'm pulling the sticker down just to give me a little bit more support trim the form so usually trim it just a little bit more than the um, the wide the wideness of the needle. Okay, roll it in just so it's nice and pinched, and then my hand comes up, and I'm able to apply the next form. Checking if it's in the middle, and then if it is in the middle, I can start I can start squishing the form. And this one, I need to cut it. The form doesn't fit in nice, and that's because of her hyponychium. So that's a piece of the skin which lies directly underneath of your nail plate. And I don't like the way the form went onto the snail, which means I need to cut the form in two places rather than one place. So the first place I need to cut it is hyponychium place, so the form sticks in better. And then the second place, so I can pinch and it's always better to remove the form if it doesn't fit in properly because if you follow the shape uh, of the form which isn't nice then all the all the needles are not going to be nice so I always rather to take it off okay and that fits much better I didn't get as much bent as with the previous previous application it is also depending on the shape of the natural nail but this is far better okay i'm just going to apply the extra nail prep just because during the form application it is often we touch the form wait for it to dry a couple seconds and then apply the universal air bond but to save the time i'm going to put uh, the fiber gel and i have used the light rose for this set I think it looks quite nice even on its own guys like I think it looks so pretty we could just do like a design couple of crystals and basically that's the nails could be finished as well so I'm using also the oval gel brush now this nail is already dry so I can apply universal air bond and now we can do the first part of the sculpting so the gel is kind of like uh, the universal air bond kind of gives like a little stickiness to the needle which is fantastic i pick up the product on the one side of the brush remove it because i don't want to have too much so i can work neatly around the cuticle area really close to the cuticle like very very close but a nice and thin layer so at the cuticle we want nice and thin layer nice and thin layer cap those free edge on the side Okay, so I have applied the product on my nail plate and now I'm picking up another scalp just at kind of joining place and now I'm going to sculpt the free edge. And we're going for a nice coffin shape. And the first layer is like a really thin layer just to kind of gives a skeleton to the nail. Okay, once I have applied it, cook it. I'm going to give it a half a cure just because I want to pinch those nails as well. So I'm doing the same on this one. And I will work like one nail, other nail and like swap the hands. That's why I have kept for you two fingers from two different hands. Now, when I'm building the skeleton part, I'm kind of going outside the shape a little bit because it's not going to take me long time to file it and I'd rather to have more product than not enough. Okay, so I would always apply the skeleton a little bit more product change. So this way my first finger is cooked and I can take a pinching clamp and just apply 
the pinching clamp in there. Now, you wouldn't pinch on the nails, not so. You wouldn't pinch on the nails which are too weak because that could cause the lifting of the gel on the side. And also you wouldn't use the metal pinching clamps. The clear ones are best because the gel can go through it really nice and easy. Change. And then I'm going to give it a final cure, so another 30 seconds. Tap it. This one is okay as well. And now I'm going to apply the pinching clamp on this needle too. Not sore. Perfect change. Okay, you can remove the pinching clamp and I can build up the structure now of the needle. Now you can either remove the form or you can keep the form. I can actually remove it so you can see better. So I'm peeling the form down. And now I'm going to build up the structure. So nice and thin layer on the entire needle. Nice and thin layer. And if you're working with the thin layer, you've got really lots of control over your product. So I'm just making sure the free edges cap, like the sides here. And then I'm picking up the large scope of the product, like pretty decent amount of the product. Okay, and make the finger to go down, like this way you will get a much better uh, result. So once you've got the uh, the bit on your the, the gel bit on your uh, brush, you can work one side, other side, one side, other side, but make sure your finger is uh, directed down the way so the gravity helps you uh, as well. So I'm just taking my bead and I'm now working one side, other side, one side, other side. I'm not going to apply the product too much to the sides because by the time I finish it, the product will run into the sides as well. So you don't want too much product in, in there, okay? And this way my uh, shape is done, change. So I have to give it a full cure now. Now I'm checking here if I can remove the form. Yes, I can remove the form. So I'm pulling the form down as well again. Like pull the form down. And now I can build up the structure on this nail as well. So what I'm going to do exactly the same like on the other nail. Nice and thin layer. So nice and thin layer. Nice and thin layer. Like making sure I'm capping the free edge. So making sure the free edge is cup. And then once I'm happy with this first layer, I'm going to pick up another large scope and we are going to build up our apex and our structure, okay? So I'm waiting for the product to kind of settle on my brush. And now exactly the same like we built it the first nail. So it's a one side, other side, one side, other side. But don't go too much to the sides because by the time you're finishing it, the product will run to the sides. And I think that's what is the biggest problem with the people working with the gel sometimes. Um, they would apply the product too much to the side. And then what is happening by the time they actually finish uh, the product application, the, the sides are flooded and um, then you get some lifting. Okay, change the hands. So this nail is finished and I can uh, show you how I'm shaping the nails as well. If you like this tutorial, hit the share buttons as well so the other people can see it as well. I'm using the UV cleanser to remove any inhibition layer. And then with the nail file, so I put my fan on and with the nail file I'm going to shape the nails. Uh, for shaping I like to use a hundred grit, so one side other side and then the free edge nice and straight and it already looks much better as a coffin shape so one side other side check the length as well just so they are matching then blend everything around the cuticle area so if we blend all the product really well around the cuticle area, we are not going to get any liftings and the nails are going to last much longer time. So this is pretty important part, guys. OK. 
Okay, just smooth it in. Another questions you guys have given me quite a lot as well, like if you buff, uh, is your product doesn't coming off? No, it doesn't come off. Gel file is much easier, so the buffer is still giving us scratches to the nail. Uh, it's a different with the acrylics. Uh, acrylics file much harder, and then if you buff it too smooth, yes, the gel is not going to stick into that. So um, that's why I buff the gel. But it's also depending on the uh, gradation of your uh, buffer. So if you use like a 100 buffer, 100 grid buffer, then it is absolutely okay as well. Okay, and now I'm just going to blend again everything around the cuticle area. The reason why I love working with the gel as well, because it's self-level, I find that it is a pretty quick way of, of doing the extensions really. Because there is not as much filing and I, I don't like filing, I don't like too much of the filing. So I'm checking also the hair view, like the free edge, if it's even. If you have lost like where you're filing, it's good sometimes to brush away the dust, so this way you can see it again. Check the land. And I'm just really doing a small touches of the file. I don't want to over file the places and I want to only file in the places which really needs to get filed. Then my next step is to take the buffer and buff that nail. Okay, so I'm just buffing the new. And do the same on the other hand. Look how I'm holding the client's nail folds as well. I'm kind of pulling them down because I don't want to hurt my client. And for a coffin shape, you really need to have those motions as well, so it does looks like a coffin shape. You can also see it that I'm only filing this part now so where the place is white that's the place I'm filing I'm not filing this place only here at the end so it's good to have a clean nail so this way you know where you're filing okay at this stage I can tidy up the cuticles so I will take my cuticle nipper 
and I'm going to tidy up the cuticles and then we can move on into the baby boomer and again I show you the, the, the easiest way for me how I'm doing the baby boomer so you can see the nail is completely blended you cannot find the place where it's starting And doing exactly the same on the other hand. So I'm just tidy up another cuticle. I'm never doing like too excessive cuticle work for my clients because if you remove, keep removing too much, they kind of grow bigger as well. So only what is really needed. Now I don't like this side of the nail. Oh, that's it. Okay, so that's my nails uh, completely ready. I'm just checking the length and the shape. Yeah, all happy. And we can move on into the next step. So clean the dust. And now we are going to do this baby boomer. And I show you also like uh, how I create it and what is fab. I can create all kind of uh, custom colors. So the parts which we have used for forms, we can use it for mixing our products, and this is fab. And I'm going to use uh, the Color Plus Red. So I'm taking a small scab, actually I might mix it here for you guys. So I'm taking a small scab of this uh, red color. Oh, actually there is hardly any in it. Okay, so I've got just a very little bit in there. So I'm going to mix it with the paint on French gel, and I don't need to really... Um, the mixing part just because this one is almost at the end so what I'm doing is I'm adding my white into this color and I'm going to create a really nice pink which we are going to use for our pink baby boomer so I'm mixing this it's just quicker for me this way and I can keep it for later on for different clients Okay, so that's my pink created. Don't make it too light because when we're fading the baby boomer, the first part goes extremely light. And if you make it too light, then uh, it's not going to be as uh, visible. Now I've got my scissors and a small sponge, which we are going to use for a baby boomer. So the sponges, you can use any kind of makeup sponges. And what I'm doing is I'm just cutting a small portion of it. So just cutting a small portion and then I've got a nice side. Taking a nail form because there always might be some wee fluffy bits and pieces. And then remove those fluffy bits and pieces. Okay, and I will be cleaning my sponge this way constantly. All the time when I will be doing the nails, I will be cleaning my sponge as well. Now take some brush and slap in the color which you have created okay so I'm just slapping in those color which I have created so I'm, I'm doing it on all of the nails and if you want to get a really nice baby boomer you need to be patient and you need to do it very thin layer to start off okay so my sponge is going to absorb quite a lot of product to start with and what I'm doing is I'm just brushing it on the nails and you can see it the product is hardly visible but it is there and I don't want any more if you put too much because you want to get it visible then the blending wouldn't be nice 
and uh, it doesn't work with the gel polishes the gel polishes are too thin that's why I have used the paint on French gel and the color plus gel because they are really highly pigmented gels so this way the baby boomer really works because the sponge doesn't absorb all the product in but if you use too thin consistency product then everything is going to be absorbed by it so this is really important okay so the first layer nice and thin nice and thin and on the thumb okay after i have created the first layer i'm going to cure this hand so inside perfect fiona is great she knows what to do so <laughs> And I'm blending this one as well. So really what I'm concentrating on is this part of the needle. Like I'm not bothered about the free edge now too much. It's just the higher parts of the needles which I want to have blended nicely. And then I show you the second blending. Of course, depending on the length of the needles, we will do either a two or three coats. And then if they're really short, you could probably get away even with the one coat. For Fiona needles, I would say even three coats might be needed but we'll see how we get on i will definitely do three i want them to be nice perfect change the hands okay so the first layer is cooked now i'm picking up another scope of the product on the brush and what i'm doing now is i'm applying it again so applying the product in okay and take a sponge again and now i'm not going as high as in the first place i'm only concentrating on half of the needle now and i'm not brushing as much now i'm more dabbing so the second layer is more about dabbing okay so dab 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 and i don't go as high as with the first layer because the first layer is already nicely faded in clean the fluffy bits and pieces you don't want to have ugly needles oh come on fluffy bits and that's it awesome change and again on this one this is actually really nice color I can't remember we have done pink nails ever on you. So it's Fiona is <laughs> getting her first time pink nails. Um, now I'm just making sure the camera is kind of catching everything properly. So dab, dab, dab. And I love doing the baby boomer this way. It's so easy. But of course you need the highly pigmented gel like it's not working with the thin consistency gels the sponge would absorb too much product tap 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 change and because i'm fussy with the set i'm going to do the third layer so the third layer i'm just placing product even lower Just so more of the ends is kind of pigmented than the rest. And now we are going to do again the dabbing, dabbing motion. So dab, dab, dab. And you can see it already, the end is kind of more pigmented. Perfect, change the hands. Now doing exactly the same on this hand.
and honestly like doing a spo uh, sponge ombre is a pleasure to be honest like you are not struggling with it you are not it's not hard to do it but keep cleaning the sponge so something like this doesn't happen but if it does remove it and uh, use highly pigmented gels okay change now our next step is to apply the top coat on those nails and then do the design and we need to apply the top coat because if we don't apply the top coat uh, the design is going to stick into the other parts of the nails as well and i really don't want that so i'm just applying the high shine no wipe top gel like making sure i'm cupping the free edge And we will do the design on the two fingers on each hand. perfect change i didn't apply it um, the top coat on the thumb because i wanted to save the time and um, get the nails with the where we're going to put the design to be ready as soon as possible And I'm going to do exactly the same on this hand as well, so don't apply the gel on the thumb. Change. And my next step is to bath those two nails. Okay, because that's the nails where I'm going to put the design on them. And if you wouldn't bath, the gel wouldn't stick in. And then if you wouldn't apply the top coat, the design would stick into the ombre part as well. And we really don't want that. So I'm just buffing those nails. And we are going to paint the design. So I'm using a tiny bit of the blue scrap to clean the nails. And then for this part of the design, I'm going to use the foil design gel and my D-liner brush. Okay, so that's a nice and thin brush. And we are going to use also some um, gold foil so i'm going to have a small piece uh, piece of this foil on the side where i can put my product and now i'm going to actually show you what i'm using as well so i'm using the foil design gel okay so i'm applying a small amount of the product on my brush And just painting the design
So what I'm doing is I'm pressing uh, kind of like on harder where I want to leave more product and then much lighter on the places where I want to have less product. Okay, and we're painting kind of swirly bits and pieces. I quite like when the designs are going more to the one side. Okay, so it's more kind of going into the one side. Now we are going to cure it, put it in exactly 30 seconds. And the curing time is very important. You don't want to over cure because the gel wouldn't stick in then. In the meantime, I'm just going to take a small piece of the foil. Now I took the gloves off because I don't want to make a mistake. You've got only always one go. To create this design so I'm cutting a small piece of the foil use the blue scrap clean the back of the foil okay you can see it there is always some bits and pieces and then transfer the foil into the design so I'm starting with the top part Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Lift it up. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Lift it up. Okay, and now just touch up some missing places. And this way we have created those beautiful design. I'm going to paint the same on this one. And I think the designs with foils always look so pretty and elegant. Also, this brush is just fantastic for any kind of swirly work. Okay, make it longer. So basically what I'm doing is just painting the kind of like an lines let me just okay. 
Let me just set the camera better a little bit. I think I have lost the focus. And it is easier for me to hold my client hand kind of sidewise, just so I can paint easier. Okay, cook it. So 30 seconds exactly perfect. And now I also got the time I've got the time to put the top coat on the thumbnail before oh no you got all the fluff of the world. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, Fiona I've got a nice free um, west, is it west? Yeah, it is west, and I've got it all over the nail now. So I'm trying to remove it. Okay, change your hands. <laughs> now I'm just cutting a small piece of the foil again and we are going to transfer it on this nail. And then also I show you just how to clean it as well and then uh, apply the top coat and basically I will finish the other hand on my own and then just show you the final results. So I've cleaned the foil. Okay, going the top part first. Then going bottom part. And then missing places. Okay, what else you can do is take a tiny bit of the new prep and go around it and check if there is any places where the foil transfer and you don't want those places to be transferred, like maybe this one here and this one there. I really love this result, so nothing too complicated, but it looks absolutely fantastic. And basically our last step on this hand is to apply the top coat on the foil design just so it stays and on the thumb because it's going to cure just exactly the same time Now I'm just going to give it a final cure to those, uh, the other hand and then do exactly the same design on this hand. And then that's those new stone. I hope you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial and you have learned something new in here as well today. If you did, give me a like and share this video so the other can see it as well. change okay and that's the final results of those uh, nails so i'm just going to uh, clean them apply the cuticle oil and take a nice thumbnail picture glittery hacks and bye for now